Hi, I'm Greg Ellis here with the18.com, and here are 18 things in 18 seconds. World Cup edition. Sorry, let's first up. Vladimir Putin. The 2018 World Cup is in Russia, so we can't wait to make fun of Vladimir Putin, the only world leader with more shirtless pictures than Cristiano Ronaldo. The cat-loving demagogue is more of a hockey fan, but we wouldn't be surprised if he used threats of violence to ensure the Russians perform well. And if Russia can't beat Saudi Arabia, they may as well call the president Sadamir Putin. Sadamir Putin. Honestly, Steve, this is terrible. You're fired. The largest deficit I've overcome. There was an arm at the beginning of that. Comebacks. The record for the largest deficit overcome to win a match in World Cup history is three, accomplished by Austria and Portugal, both in quarter-final matches. In 1954, Austria fell behind to host Switzerland 3-0 before winning 7-5, setting the record for the most goals in one match. In 1966, Portugal shockingly tried North Korea 3-0 after 22 minutes, but the great Eusebio scored four goals and his team won 5-3. Nicknames. Most national teams have nicknames, but some are better than others. Some teams like Brazil's Seleccion, Germany's Die Mannschaft, and Russia's Spoinea, the national team, are a bit derivative. And there are too many colour names like Le Bleu and La Albi Celeste. We love animal nicknames like the Green Falcons, Atlas Lions, Super Eagles, and Three Lions, but our favourites have to be the Pharaohs and the Socceroos. Fox Sports. Welcome to Russia. Fox is taking quite an interesting strategy to its coverage of the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Whilst they will have an actual studio set up in Moscow, like we have here at the 18, most of the announcers are going to be stuck in a studio in Los Angeles and they're unable to see more of the international feed than you'll be watching at home. Get ready for plenty of delayed reactions, confused announcers and games with no commentary at all because all the announcers are stuck in traffic. Crazy moments. Every World Cup has plenty of crazy moments, but here are a few of our favourites from the first 20 editions. The United States beating England in 1950, West Germany's Harold Schumacher annihilating Patrick Batterson without punishment in 1982, Diego Maradona being thrown out of the 1994 World Cup, and the Battle of Nuremberg in 2006, in which there are record 16 cautions, 4 ejections, and that was between Portugal and the Netherlands. Russian Fun Facts here are some fun facts about Russia. Uh, the Russian language uses a Cyrillic alphabet. My favorite letter is backwards R. Russia is the largest country in the world, nearly twice as big as second place Canada because Antarctica is not a country. The name Russia actually comes from a band of Scandinavians who settled in Novgorod three times in the late 1700s. Russia partitioned Poland along with Prussia and Austria until the country no longer existed. Russian hooligans. Soccer hooligans in Russia are no joke, even gathering far away from stadiums to have fistfights between rivals. During the 2016 European Championship, Russia was nearly disqualified because its Amruli fans rioted and wreaked havoc in Marseille, surrounding a match against England. Hopefully the fans behave this summer. <sighs> Tickets. Now, as most surprised, citizens of Russia have purchased the most tickets to the World Cup. It's a bit more surprising that citizens from the United States, who didn't even qualify, have purchased the second most amount of tickets. Are you going to tell them or should I? Russians have bought about 800,000, the US 80,000, Brazil 65, Colombia 60, Germany 55, Mexico 51, Argentina 45, Peru 39, Australia 35, and England 31,000. That book is kicking in. Who to support? The United States isn't in the World Cup, so American fans everywhere are asking who to support this summer. If you like your neighbours, you should root for Mexico. If you're a front runner, go for Germany. If you're a hipster, learn Iceland's Viking chant. If you like scoring, cheer for Belgium. If you want disappointment, England. If you want chaos, follow Uruguay. If you like dancing, jump around on the Columbia train. And if you like the possibility of losing 7-1 to Germany, root for Brazil. Champions, champions of the world. Group of death. Mexico's run of six straight round 16 eliminations is in jeopardy after being placed alongside Germany, Sweden and South Korea in what is widely considered the Grupo de la Muerte. The world will come to a halt for 90 minutes when El Tri opens against the defending world champions in Moscow and Mexico players will know that history awaits, probably in the form of a 7-1 loss. <laughs> At the end, yeah. Doping. If you believe Rocky IV, you'll know that Russia is populated by Ivan Drago types, Olympic gold medalists running off anabolic steroids and a good healthy sense of nationalism. The Russian team must break you, and then it must enlist the help of the Federal Security Service and switch its steroid-tainted urine with clean samples evading positive detection by FIFA and WADA. A bit slower at short one. Okay. Betting. You could argue that the real winners are the friends we make along the way. But the sports bookies will say it's going to be Germany or Brazil. This should come as no surprise. The two nations have combined for nine titles, while the rest of the world altogether has 11. The main threats to the hegemony are Spain, France and Argentina, but betting against this German team is like betting against seeing Cristiano Ronaldo's abs this summer. Ah, numbers. Leo Messi. Lionel Messi enters the World Cup on the back end of another sensational season for Barcelona. The Argentine won the European Golden Boot after scoring 34 goals in 35 games, and he'll get plenty of opportunities during the group stage. I mean, it's Iceland. It's their first ever World Cup against the greatest ever footballer of all time. The Golden Boot could belong to Messi just after one match, even if some of his goals do get credited to Harry Kane. The World Cup will take... Shit. 
Donald Trump. The World Cup will take over Fox and Twitter this summer, two of Donald Trump's most favorite things. And it's a certainty that the president's going to get involved, but what will POTUS say? Like any fan, he's likely to be left enraged by a refereeing decision, accuse others of a witch hunt, threaten to pull the United States out of FIFA, and then outlaw the act of playing soccer as part of a MAGA reform, insisting that proper football should be played mainly with the hands or not at all, or that could just be fake news. Does it look like I've had a hat on? Annoying hashtags. 2014 gave us things how it could save and Tim Cahilling, but what will 2018 offer in terms of annoying hashtags that last for an entire month and disappear for good like a boo sailor? Well, if it's just as annoying as it is brilliant, we know it's going to be supplied by Neymar. He's already been involved in Cicada, after which he probably left, but we predict a summer of Neymarshalizing in Russia. That's when you refuse to speak to your teammates in favor of dancing around with a shoe on your head. Slut <laughs> okay. and left out. After his whole insistence on being at the World Cup turned out to be nothing more than a massive marketing ploy for Visa, the question quickly becomes, was Sweden right to omit Zlatan Ibrahimovic from its World Cup squad? In short, absolutely. Why aren't the Netherlands there? Why aren't Italy there? Because of Sweden. The little Nordic nation knocked out the two giants of the game without Zlatan. Tax to Mikok Hedor. Want one more? Goals. Between 1994 and 2010, we all watched in horror as the average goals per game at the World Cup steadily declined from 2.71 to 2.23. It's devastating. Many feared the worst for international football, but Brazil 2014 saw a glorious return to form and Russia promises to see more of the same. Defending just isn't on vogue. You get criticised on social media for being boring and then you get to spend the rest of your night crying and thinking about the shots you never had. Three by a referees that have not... Mm. Rule changes. There'll be two big rule changes at the 2018 World Cup. Uh, the use of the video assistant referee by referees that have never really used a video assistant referee, and the allowance of a fourth substitute in matches that go into extra time. VAR will allow officials to continue to make terrible decisions whilst looking at television. But what about the fourth substitute? Doesn't that just favor the depth of the bigger nations? That doesn't seem right. I've been Greg Ellis with 18 things in 18 seconds for the World Cup. World Cup, World Cup, World Cup, World Cup 2018, World Cup 18 in 18, World Cup, World Cup, World Cup.